Hi everyone, welcome back to Calvi Homestead. In today's video, I am going to show you what we are doing for our first week of pantry challenge. So we decided to start and jump in with everybody else by doing the pantry challenge. And I know that this pantry challenge was started by Three Rivers Homestead um, several years ago. And this is gonna be our first year participating and I'm really excited. And we're really gonna be focusing on freezers. So if I happen to say freezer challenge in any of my videos, that's why. We will be cooking from our pantry, but we're also gonna be cooking a lot from our freezers. I'm really gonna be focused on um, really eating through the freezer. Now we're not gonna get through all of our freezers because then we won't have any meat. But we are like really, really stocked right now and um, we need to just start making a dent in it and being mindful um, of using the meat in our freezer instead of buying more meat at the store. So I know the whole point of the pantry challenge is that you're setting your own rules and we are going to be placing an Azure order at the beginning of February. Um, we're not going to be buying any meat products, but like we're going to be going to the grocery store still, but we're going to be spending a lot less than usual. So we're going to be getting our basics like milk, um, cheese, which we buy cheese in bulk, so we probably won't have to buy any cheese. Um, we really like to have the spring salad mix, so we'll make sure to pick up that. And then I like sometimes to pick up convenience food um, for my son, for his snacks, but we're also going to be trying to make more of his snacks at home. So this week's pantry challenge video is going to start off with a tour of our freezers. I'm not going to be doing a tour of the pantry because my pantry is kind of spread out everywhere and I really want to get it organized and on shelves and stuff like that um, before we end, end up doing a tour of that. But let's go look at the freezers and see what we're starting with and then I'll show you what we made this week. All right, so here is the first freezer and you can see we're pretty, pretty packed full. Um, so this freezer mainly consists of the deer we harvested this year um so all this deer is the meat that we have that my husband my seven-year-old and I harvested mainly my husband I got one and my son got one but you can see we have deer steaks just like crazy these are shanks um back straps same down here all steaks deer steaks venison i do have some frozen vegetables that i want to go through which will be nice in the pantry challenge um and then down here we do have a bag of ice that i need to get out of there but um so we still have some oh my mom got this for my son Apparently it's really good. <laughs> um, we do have some cherry tomatoes still. Um, and these we typically use for like that TikTok feta pasta. <laughs> um, this is a huge pack of deer meat here along with, oh geez. Okay, yeah, so these are the bulk packs. So all this right here, you can see, oh boy. There, we're packed full of those. Those are going to be, we're gonna grind these and we're gonna make um, venison bratwurst and summer sausage. And I'm gonna take you guys along with us with that. So that should be fun. Here is, let me see, oh boy. So I have some tor tortillas under there. Um, we have the frozen hash browns, which I do need to grab a couple packs of these for dinner tonight um, and then we have this 50 pound bag of flour here that I got from Azure and I need to pull this out let it defrost a little bit and then um, store it so we can have that room so we have a whole hog coming and I think I can condense these two shelves pretty decently to be able to get the hog in here but so we have some more 
deer steaks up here. Oh, so more hash browns here. I'll just grab from here. We have Stacy's tortillas down here. This is like frozen fish. Yeah, these are. This is frozen trout. And we have some pork cutlets here that need to get used up. Let's go ahead and grab two of these, and we'll make a quick dent in the freezer. So yeah, we need to start eating some of this because we have a whole hog coming in the next week or two and I will show you everything we get from that hog. And then we also have a half of a cow coming, but it's only gonna be ground beef. So yeah, this is one freezer that we'll be able to work with. And then um, let me, this is the freezer in the shop right down from the RV. And let me take you down to the house, my parents' house, and show you the freezer we have down in there. All right, so the lighting is awful down here. And as you can see, we have like a seal problem with this freezer because of this. <laughs> but, um, so yeah, I have butter in this one. This is some mozzarella I made, oh boy. Um, some, just some bones for stock, some green beans we put up, um, some more beef bones here. This is leftover, oops, sorry. This is leftover pulled pork. We have some peaches, hash browns. What else? Let's see, there's a penny in here for some reason. But yeah, there's some random frozen vegetables down here. I have some frozen salsa back here. And then down here, I have some more frozen potatoes. A little bit of pork left. So this is pork, pork steak, beef bones for stock, beef bones for stock. We have some um, deer meat here, ground deer meat. Some more pork here. This is frozen fish, again, for like fish fry stuff. This stuff here is like pork cutlets. I think, I think we might have a, this is a ham hock. But, um, more beef bones back there. I actually came down here because I wanted to see if we had any bacon. We're getting our hog back soon, but it looks like some bacon for tonight's dinner. Um, this is some more of that bulk deer here. Um, shank. And then we have our frozen edamame. More frozen edamame. Strawberries. Um, down here. Ooh, we do have bacon. Let's see what pack we're going to smaller pack probably. This is cured gel, so that'll work. We need that. We have another pack of bacon, and I think that's it. Um, these are some um, short ribs, I believe. Yeah, short ribs. More bulk meat that needs to be ground. Um, we have some goat stew meat. A whole duck. <laughs> Um, summer sausage. We're actually getting lower on summer sausage than I thought. We have some ground pork down here, which I will be using some of that. Um, oh, my hands are freezing. Let's push this back in. And then in the door here, I have, see, I should have vacuum sealed these when I did them because you can see they're kind of freezer burnt, but these are like the sweet bell peppers. In here we have some frozen carrots, frozen carrots, carrots. Um, so just some like extra yeast and cultures for cheese making, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, carrots. What is this? I think this is more goat, goat ribs. And then down here, oh, some lemongrass here. And then this is um, my Nana makes, oh, what is it called? Okay, I'm gonna have to put it on the screen. But you mix this sauce, this is just the sauce. You mix it with spaghetti, 
and it's so good. Same here, so delicious. So those are the freezers we need to work through. And you can see not a lot of room in either one of them, but I think we can condense this. I think we can use up some stuff to condense it. And hopefully, eventually, one day, get this fixed because, woo, yeah, you can see the seal in there, but I guess I need to show you what's in my RV fridge. Um, so our RV fridge, if you haven't watched us, is pretty much a full-sized fridge, like on the smaller side of a full-size fridge. Um, so this is where we keep like our ice. Um, there's a bucket under here to put ice in. Um, my dog is drinking her water right now. This is just a chicken carcass to use for stock. These are, what is this? Oh, leftover chicken wings. So we could use this for something or throw it into the stock. Um, onions for stock. These are also onions for stock. I didn't know I had a bag in there already. Frozen banana, oh, sorry. Frozen bananas. Um, frozen croissant buns, pork steaks, uh, I do have some frozen celery that I didn't want to go bad. And now we do have the rest of this mostly is frozen vegetables. So we have some corn, carrots, cherry tomatoes. I do have some tortellini, peas, and then in the bottom, this really needs to get cleaned out because there's a lot of stuff in here that can be condensed or um, used up pretty quickly. Okay, down here we have, this is a venison heart. Um, let's see, let me switch hands here. Have some leftover chuck roast and I was gonna use this for pho because I um, have some canned pho broth. Um, let's see, oh, some doves. I have a whole chicken in here. Two bags of frozen jalapenos and actually one of these are for my mom. So I can give those to her. Leftover bag of chips. Um, some more sweets. I grew these in the garden this year. These um, baby sweet bells, these are our favorite. We don't even grow bell peppers because we have these. Um, some chicken wings. And then we have some um, venison tenderloin. So I mainly keep like our meat products for the most part on this side of this freezer. And then over here is typically fruit. So here's frozen blueberries from Azure. Um, nope, I got more than just <laughs> fruit over here. There's that venison heart. I have some acai bowls um, from Sam's. Um, French fries from Azure. These crinkle fries. I don't love these. These aren't my favorite. Um, here's that five pound pack bag of cherries. Um, that we're gonna make some jam out of. More butter, leftover pot stickers, um, some raw walnuts. I have some frozen macaroons down there and no one liked those from Aldi. No one liked them. So they're just, they've just been sitting in here. Um, these were some pizza rolls or something. I think I uh, little kids stay the night. This is another venison part. So that's it in this freezer. Um, but I do think we could condense this down a bit during our pantry slash freezer challenge. So let's see what we can do in here. So the first meal we're starting out with is a potato soup in the crock pot. I am using it in my Instapot, um, but I kind of use them interchangeably. So we're going to start off with two bags of frozen hash browns, um, but we want 32 ounces total. Each of my bags were 16 ounces. Um, this recipe is so simple, but it is so delicious. So next we're going to add 
a cup and a half of chicken stock that I had canned. Um, I'm just kind of measuring it out here. And then the seasonings are super simple too. So this is a ranch um, mix. So if you have the like ranch packet, just use one of those. You just want the equivalent of a ranch packet. So I'm just kind of guesstimating here a little bit. Um, really you can add any seasonings you want, um, but the ranch packet really makes it super delicious. Here I have some minced garlic. Um, you can use fresh garlic if you want. Um, and I always add a little pinch extra. <laughs> I think I do it with the minced onion too. So here's the minced onion I'm adding in. Just kind of do it to your taste, maybe a tablespoon or so, tablespoon and a half. Um, I've added uh, Italian seasoning in here before too, and it was really good. I just didn't do it today. And then just your simple salt and pepper. So I wanted to say that I didn't add a ton of salt to this at first because of the ranch packet. That ranch packet has salt in it as well. So we'll just taste this later um, and kind of see what we think about it. So we're just going to stir it around. One thing I wanted to let you know is you can add fresh onion, carrot, celery to this if you wanted to add some vegetables and it'd still turn out just as good and the cook time would be the same. So now we're working on our cream of chicken soup. So this recipe calls for two cans of cream of chicken. I am making my own. I typically make my own. Uh, the recipe, I just, I just kind of eyeball everything. So I'm making a roux here. You can see I got my pan way too hot. And for the roux, I'm just checking the consistency that I want, but you want about four tablespoons of butter or some sort of fat um, and you want about four tablespoons of flour. I'm just pulling it off the heat here because my pan was just way too hot. I'm letting the flour cook out a bit before I add the other half a cup of my chicken stock and watch this magic happen. I love watching this every time. It's so cool. Look at it thicken up. That's just so neat. So now we're going to go in and add a cup and a half of milk. I use whole milk. And we're going to stir that up until it gets thickened up a bit. Um, I'm just going to simply season, season it with some salt and pepper. And we're going to add it to our potatoes. So now that we've added our equivalent of two cans of cream and chicken soup, we're just going to stir it real good. And so in the crock pot, you can cook this on low for four to six hours or on high for two to three hours. And um, I'll show you what it looks like after about four hours. And you can see the potatoes are still holding together nicely. I actually in the end here. I kind of let them break down a little bit too much, uh, but that's okay. It still was so good. Um, but yeah, I would say let them go for three or four hours and then we're going to add, oh, there's little Callie. <laughs> and then we're going to add our next ingredient. But now I wanted to work on my topping. Um, so that's the jowl, the cured jowl, which is basically bacon that I pulled out of my freezer down there to use as a topping for this. So I just lay them out on a sheet pan 
and I just bake it in the oven. You could fry them in the pan too, but I just bake it in the oven for about 20 minutes. Just, I kind of go by eye and, um, until they're nice and crisped up so I can break them up to use as a topping. So the last ingredient we're adding is a half of a block of cream cheese chunked up. And I'm just gonna mix that block in um, to help it melt a little better. And then I'll come back in about 10 minutes um, and stir it up to melt it all in and plate it up. So as you can see here, I did let those potatoes break down just a little bit further than I like them, but they were still there, it still worked out nice. So I'm just plating it up for dinner and topping it with our bacon. Had I had green onion, I definitely would have added green onion. And I didn't think this really needed any shredded cheese, but you could always add shredded cheese, shredded cheese to it as well. So since this was a pretty hearty dinner, I decided to add my favorite salad to go along with it. I will show you this salad um, next week when we make the dressing again, but look how pretty that pink dressing is. It is so good and I can't wait to share it with you guys. So the next day, here we are, I'm in my um, Instapot. I just added those wings that we saw in the freezer together and I pressure cooked them for about 25 minutes uh, to make a stock. And then I reserve some of that stock for tomorrow. And I just grab some other ingredients out to make it with um, using Ditalini in this from Azure. And I just made a simple chicken noodle soup with a side salad. Super easy. All right, so tonight for dinner, um, I cut up this delicata squash. Oop. And delicata squash is so, so delicious because you can eat the rind or skins uh, because well first of all they're really good and they're and they're still they're so thin that they're tender you can they're super edible you can buy it you can peel them for sure if you want to I just don't because that's more work so I'm just gonna put them on this pan with some olive oil toss them in some olive oil salt pepper and this is gonna be one of our side dishes um, for dinner tonight but I wanted to tell you guys, if you watched my Azure video several months ago, do you remember when I got delicata squash? Yes, these are the delicata squash that I got in that Azure order. Delicata squash are a winter type squash, which means they store really, really well. So I'm using this and um, I've just, been keeping it stored and um, we're just gonna toss all these on here yeah so I've been having it stored and it's still perfectly good to use so I'm gonna get these on here toss in some olive oil um, and just simple salt and pepper because they have a sweetness to them they're not quite as sweet as butternut squash but don't mind my dirty floors it's been um, we're still the ground's still drying up from all the rain and snow so it's hard not to bring mud into the, the RV. So here's our side dish tonight. All right, so along with our delicata squash tonight, we are doing some pork chops. These are pork chops from the pork we just recently raised and got them back today. So I had to stuff that freezer, I had to clean that freezer out and stuff that pork in. So whenever I show you what all we got back from the hogs that we raised, you'll be able to see that freezer again. But um, I'm just gonna, do them simple tonight. I'm not gonna throw them out on the grill. Um, I think I'm gonna put them on the Blackstone and just make it easy. Um, and I think I'm just gonna season them up with this tonight. Um, I really like Kinder's and so we're gonna try this on the pork chops tonight. So tonight with our pork chops and delicata squash, we are gonna be making one of my favorite side dishes because it is so delicious and it is so easy and it's packed full of flavor. 
and I think you guys will love it too. So we're going to start by melting some butter in the bottom of our pan and then we're going to break up some spaghetti. So about three quarters of a cup to a cup and we're going to lightly, lightly is the key word, we're going to lightly brown this pasta. You do not want this pasta to get a super dark brown color or it'll have a burnt flavor to it. So I'll kind of show you the process and kind of what color you're looking for. You can see here, it happens pretty fast too. So you can see we're starting to brown up a little bit. We got a little bit more of an orange color. And then right here, this is about where you wanna be. You can see it looks more orange than brown. And I'm telling you, the best smell in the world is toasted pasta and butter. Um, you should try it just for <laughs> The smell so I was trying to show you here kind of the color you're looking for now we're gonna add a cup of rice and we're just gonna lightly toast these rice doesn't really toast up but you just want to kind of heat it up in that butter till it turns opaque right now it's just all white and once you toast it up a little bit it'll start uh, getting a little bit of a translucent kind of thing to it um, so after all of that's toasted, I'm just seasoning it up here. I season this pretty heavily um, just because the pasta and the rice soak in the seasoning flavors. So after I season this up, we're gonna add about, so we added a cup of rice and then we had about three quarters of a cup to a cup of pasta. So I'm adding about two and a half, no, I'm adding about three cups of stock here. So we're just gonna add that stock, let it come up to a simmer. And once it comes up to a simmer, you're gonna put a lid on it and let it cook for about 20 minutes. After about 20 minutes, this is what you're gonna get. It looks so pretty. I love making this rice peel off, um, especially because it is so easy and you can be so versatile with it. You can add whatever you want to it after it's cooked or even while it's cooking. Um, and so my favorite add-ins for this, um, I always add about three tablespoons of lemon juice just to kind of brighten it up. We got that, that brown butter flavor in there. And so we needed something acidic. So, and then I always add a very nice helping of Parmesan cheese and then mix that in and that's it that's how easy it is and it's so good you can add chicken to this if you want beef to this if you want uh, and just have it as your main dish if you add your protein in it so easy super simple and look how beautiful this plate is with our delicata squash our pork chop and our rice peel off this was a good one else I have noticed since we have started the pantry challenge this week is that we are not good with leftovers we don't eat leftovers enough and so another one of my rules during this pantry challenge is food waste I want to make sure we are not wasting any food whether that means we're eating those leftovers or I'm cooking less so we don't have leftovers so that that's another rule besides focusing on the freezer um, starting today tonight this will start day one of the next week of the pantry challenge so my next video for week two is going to have a full week of meals and we might even have a day in there where we just do leftovers we'll see how it goes i'm kind of just going with the flow and I'm trying to be mindful of everything that we do and i just want to tell you guys how much i appreciate that you are here with me watching our videos um with my family so if you could subscribe down below and leave a comment and let me know if you are participating 
in the pantry challenge and what your specific roles are. So thank you so, so much from the bottom of my heart. And I will see you next week with our second week of pantry challenge.